Hey there, welcome back to another review. This time of a movie that I've been curious about for a little while because I've always been a fan of Mike Tyson, at least his early fights, at least the Mike Tyson that became the world champion, became the heavyweight champion, at least that Mike Tyson. Not the Mike Tyson who self-destructed and went to jail and did all kinds of stupid shit and bit off of Vander Holyfield's ear and got a stupid tribal tattoo on his face. That Mike Mike Tyson is not the Tyson I'm a fan of. I'm a fan of the young, raw Mike Tyson, who was the youngest world heavyweight champion. And that's the Tyson that I'm a fan of. And this film does actually does a really great job chronicling the rise and fall of that Tyson. And that film is Tyson. The bigger they are the harder they fall. Now, why am I holding up the VHS? Because for some stupid reason, this is not available on DVD in the United States. I know Wikipedia says it was released in 2008. I don't see it online anywhere. I don't see it available for sale on Amazon, unless it's extremely super rare, and there's like only a few handful of copies made. I don't think this was actually released on DVD in the United States. It was to release, released overseas, in like Germany somewhere, but for some reason, this was not released on DVD in the United States. Is it because of Mike Tyson himself? I don't know. Maybe there's something going on with the reason why this isn't released or whatever. But this was an HBO original film. As you can see on the side here, it says HBO original movie. This is an HBO TV film. And as one of those TV movies, this is one of the better ones that I've seen. It's got some excellent performances by the cast, especially Michael J. White. And this is his first big breakout role. This is the first big starring role that he had in his career. And this is, in my opinion, his best acting performance. He is he becomes Mike Tyson, down to the mannerisms, down to the boxing style. He's ferocious, he's hard. And he does a good job showing the sensitive aspects of Mike as well. It's a very, um, I think it's a very impressive performance. Especially for a first time big role for Michael J. White. It's really too bad that his career didn't go anywhere after this except he did Spawn and then that movie sucked and that wasn't really a good indicator for how good of an actor he could be because if you've seen this, he really does a great job. He also looks the part too. He really does. Um, it was excellent casting choice. Excellent casting because Michael J. White looks like a young Mike Tyson. And the rest of the supporting cast is equally as solid and phenomenal as he is. You have George C. Scott, who plays Cut Customato, uh, who is ultimately trains him. He's the one that kept him on the right track, and he's played. By, and George C. Scott, may he rest in peace. Uh, George C. Scott's always an actor that I've always liked, and um, he was really, really good in this. Great performance. Paul Winfield was really good too is Don King. It was perfect casting. He looked the part. He did a good job playing the slimy promoter that is Don King. James Sicking played uh, Bill Clayton. Bill Caton. He did a good job too uh, for a little bit that he had to do. Uh, Michael Jamal Warner, you might remember from, uh, I think I think Michael Jamal Warner was in the Cosby show, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he was Theo Huxtable, Huxtable in the Cosby show. He does a good job playing Rory Holloway, who is, I believe he's a friend or somebody that Tyson is paying to be a friend of his, or somebody from the neighborhood that he knew. Tony Lo, Tony Lobianco plays Jimmy Jacobs. Uh, he does a good job. Jimmy Jacobs is the original manager that Tyson had before Don King ended up taking over. And Jimmy ended up passing away, and then Bill Caton took his place. Clark Gregg, yes, the same Clark Gregg who plays uh, Agent Coulson in the Avengers and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. plays Kevin Rooney, who is ultimately becomes uh, Tyson's trainer after George C. Scott's character, Custy Amato, passes away. And he's phenomenal in this. He's really good. Um, I should highly recommend Clark Gregg fans to give this film a look because he's really good in this. He shows a lot of the talent that he would show in later films in this movie. 
And you have Kristen Wilson plays Robin Givens, who also does a really good job, too. She looks like Robin Givens. She's the perfect casting choice. And um, so, honestly, I thought it was a really good cast. And uh, the direction by Uli, Eld Uli Edel, who I don't even think he's done that much other than this film. Um, I'm just checking to see what else that this director has done. I thought it was actually pretty good directing. For the most part. I mean, for what he had to work with as a TV movie. Probably the best film he's ever done. I mean, this is a guy who directed um, a film called Last Exit to Brooklyn. He directed an episode of Twin Peaks. He directed Body of Evidence. That awful Madonna movie. <laughs> this is definitely better than that uh, Madonna movie that he did. with, Directed with William Dafoe. Where the Madonna, you know, killed some guy. Because she had sex with him. He did Confessions of a Sorority Girl. He directed the TV movie Rasputin, which I believe was also an HBO original film starring Alan Rickman. I've been curious about it because Alan Rickman's in it. He also directed Purgatory, which is actually a pretty decent TV movie. TV movie western. Uh, and he directed The Little Vampire, which is a pretty shitty movie with uh, Jonathan Lipnicki. So, yeah, this, this is not... This is, he hasn't directed that many good movies, so so to speak. But I thought he did a good job with this film. I mean, it was it wasn't anything unbelievable or super super memorable, but it was effective and it it was it was it was good. I thought it was fine enough. I think the boxing scenes were well shot, well edited. The editing by Seth Flom. The cinematography by Jack Con Conroy is a little bit. There's not much to it. Uh, it's a TV movie, so it definitely does feel like that way in its size and scope. I almost wish this movie had a bigger budget. I really do. Honestly, I do. I mean, Uli Ledel does okay, but I wish it had a, a another director who could really bring something really visually stunning to this movie. And that's what this film lacks, is like really knockout direction and knockout cinematography and um, <clears throat> and so forth. But the story, the screenplay by um, Robert Johnson, I thought was pretty solid. It's based on the book by Jose Terra Torres, who was a former boxman and boxer, boxman, the former boxer and former chairman of the New York State Athletic Commission. And this is based on the book Fire and Fear, the inside story of Mike Tyson that he wrote. Um, the film depicts events from Tyson's troubled childhood in Brooklyn through his conviction in 1992 for the rape of beauty pageant contestant Desiree Washington. And pretty much the subtitle says it all. This this movie is all about the rise and fall of Mike Tyson. And it was actually really, I thought it was really engaging. And I thought it was a really entertaining film for the most part. I thought it was well paced. It was about an hour and 40 minutes. There were some moments where it kind of dragged, drugged a little bit, dragged on a bit. But for the most part, I really like this. I, I really think this is one of the more underrated boxing movies out there. Nobody really talks about this film. Uh, it's It has a 33% of Rotten Tomatoes, but that's not fair because every single review that I see on there, it gets a fresh rating, so I don't know why it's got a 33%. Um, it's definitely one of the best TV movies I can think of that I've seen. I thought this was much better than Creed. I think this is this is one of the few boxing films that I think really stands out because of the way it's set up. It show and because of the character. Tyson is not a perfect character. He's a ticking time bomb. And this film really does a good job showing that. But at the same time, it helps you understand him more. You can't help but feel bad for him at you know, at certain points in this movie. I mean, the rape thing and all of that and all the stupid shit he did later that's kind of stuff that I, I can't don't really have a defense for. But you feel bad for him when you when you find out that a lot of the people that he trusted in his life died and passed away. His mom died, his dad wasn't there for him, he lived in the streets, it was tough. You know, he had a rough childhood. They even show it in the beginning where he's a little kid brandishing a gun and like pointing guns at people and he's on the wrong side of the tracks. He's He's definitely has anger issues. He definitely has, it might even has some psychological problems. And, but his, but 
Custy Amato comes in and gets him on the right track and even adopts him as his own son. And when he passes away, that was that was like losing his own his actual real father. And then that opened up the door for people like Don King to come in and really, really take advantage of Tyson. Uh, Tyson was you. You got to remember, folks. Tyson was the youngest champion ever. He was 20 years old when he became the heavyweight champion of the world, and so and he had issues and he wasn't really that well educated, and so he was pretty much taken advantage of, and he didn't know he didn't know he was being taken advantage of, especially by by his uh, by Robin Givens and her mother. And, and of course, his promoter, Don King. And, yes, he's at fault for it because, you know, he had this fantasy dream of marrying and being being with Robin Givens, this, this actress that he saw on TV. But it's a train wreck. It's a total train wreck, but it's very compelling. It's very interesting to watch because of the fact that this is a boxing film that doesn't have the typical story rags to riches, stays that way, or loses it and gets it back. This is a story where it's a tragic fall from grace. That's what it is. And it's it makes it for a really different type of film to watch in comparison to a lot of these other boxing films and boxing dramas. It does a good job showing his, his rise, uh, his relationship that he builds with Custy Amato, uh, Michael J. White and great George C. Scott were phenomenal together in those sequences. They really had really great chemistry with one another. Um, you even had some really memorable, I thought, memorable lines of dialogue. Like Cuss is talking to young Mike Tyson, and he's like, Don't be scared of going into a fight. It's when you ain't scared that it's time to worry, because fear is a friend of every good and reasonable athlete. And then here's one that was actually, this is a quote, from Cuss that's actually repeated at the end during the basically the trial, the rape trial at the end of the film. And it, it's it's a good way to bookend the movie. There's a great quote, too. What's the difference between the hero and the coward? Because what's the difference between the hero and the coward? There ain't no difference. They both feel exactly the same on the inside. They both fear dying and getting hurt. It's what the hero does that makes him a hero. And what the other doesn't do that makes him a coward. And I actually think that's a really, really good quote. And, yeah, and even there's even some really nice uh, bits of edits where the director and the editor, they put in old footage of Rocky Marciano, Marciano and Joe Lewis into the film. And, yeah, it's a... It's a really well-crafted film for a TV movie. Uh, like I said, I would have wished it had a little bit bigger of a budget because it could have done even more, but even even with what it is, it's still a really, really... I thought it was a really good movie. Um, and Michael J. White is a huge reason why. He is phenomenal in this. He embodies Tyson. He gets the accent down, you know, the... He gets his voice down and it doesn't sound like a parody. It sounds natural. He does a great job channeling his anger and showing, you know, his sensitive side. And I like how the film actually shows, you know, Tyson's love for his pigeons and then inserts them into the story, which was actually, that also made it stand out too. I mean, that's unique. It's Tyson is, is, is he's really honestly kind of a unique individual He's got his issues, and he's has has his problems. He's not perfect, and he's fucked up, and he's kind of fucked in the head. But he has a good side to him that really does make you want to root for him, and makes you want him to make things work. And he just got misled. He let himself get mis misled. He he's not perfect, and that's the thing. It's like you. At one point, at, at some points, you root for Tyson. At other points, you're like, "What are you doing? Stop doing stupid shit!" Like when he assaulted these, uh, these the shop clerk at this convenience store because he's looking for these women that he thinks might have hot hid in there, and he assaults people. And it's like, "Don't do this stupid shit!" And he's acting like a gangster, and you know, 
acting like he's going to shoot him. It's just, it, it's like one of those things. It's like, there's so much potential. And that's the thing. And this film does a great job showing that, that Tyson in his prime was just one of the most ferocious and most unstoppable and best fighters and best boxers ever. But he just didn't, he just, he was a young lion. He was raw. He was, and he, once he lost Cuss, he just, he just didn't have the control that he needed. He needed to be on a leash so then he doesn't destroy himself and destroy his life. And it's fine if you use that anger and that frustration to, and take it out on your opponents, but it's not fine to let it bleed into your life. And that's what happened with Tyson. And it's so tragic to watch, to see somebody that has so much potential and actually lives up to it and then loses the person that he loved the most that raised him as, as if he were his own and cuss. And then he tries to make things work with his new manager. And then he also passes away. And then he just has to deal with that, just this constant loss in his life. And... And of course, you have the you have the fight where he actually proves that he can actually he actually is one of the best fighters when he beats Spinks and knocks him out in like no time, and it's a brutal knockout. And but that's a it's even that moment is not as it's bittersweet, and that's the perfect way to describe this film and describe his story. It's bittersweet. It's so bittersweet. It's. He gets out of the streets, he makes a life for himself, he figures things out, but then he fucks up, he slips up, he rapes this chick, gets sent to jail, and even before that, it was he was already starting to fall. Even after he beat Sphinx, it was already he was already starting to fall because he decided to fire uh Katen and go with Don King, who in this film Paul Winfield tries to call Katen Satan, but in reality, Don King is Satan. He's the sa he's actually the one who's Satan in this situation, not Caton. And he manipulated Tyson. He basically bought him. He got him to take to take him in, take him in as his manager and his promoter because he's got this. He's been offering him so much money, and of course Tyson is vulnerable at this moment because he's lost his wife who divorced him. He's has these bouts of psychotic episodes. She's gone on television and basically said that he's beat her and he's done all of this and he probably did. And and Michael J. White just does such a great job showing this progression of this character. You you already see that there's this fire within this character from very early on before he even goes to his first fight in the Olympic in the Junior Olympics and. There's a really the, the film does a good job showing this inner fire when he's getting ready to he's nervous and he's scared of this first fight and his promoter you know really what it's not really his promoter it's his trainer his first trainer who was uh, played by I think it's Holt McClaney who plays Teddy Atlas and what happens is is he's pumping him up and he ends up just smashing the shit out of his locker. And it's one of those things where it's like it's scary, but at the same time, it's a it's a great way to show how powerful and how dangerous, but at the same time, how talented Tyson is. And that's the thing. That's what part of this is that side of Tyson, this 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 uh psychotic, just unrelenting fire inside of him is what made him great but he couldn't control it and so that's 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 the thing that's the film does a great job showing that and it does a great job with the fight scene showing how powerful tyson is i mean every time he throws a punch you feel it in the back row it's just so powerful it just sounds like a rifle going off it's just boom 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 it's just the film it just does a great job showing how powerful Tyson was and Jai right Michael J White does a good job physically performing these powerful punches 
and um, yeah, it's the boxing scenes I thought were some of the most realistic I've seen, and they're really well shot, they're well edited, they really hit pack a punch, because it, it just there's so much ferocity and and just impact in them, and that's Tyson for you, really, that really was Tyson, and um, great casting um, on, you know, for the other boxers too, I mean, for you know, Reggie Cathy plays Michael Winston. You got uh, Mitch Green played by Michael Jace. Dwayne Davis does plays James Buster Douglas. Um, so, and there's also the stuff that kept you interested by the fact that he's not perfect. He has some problems, Tyson. Um, he, he might have had sex with an underage girl who was related to his former trainer, who then, in a tense scene, puts a gun to his head and pretty much says, if you ever try to fuck, you know, ever fuck with my family again, I'll fucking kill you. And then he ends up getting, his trainer ends up leaving. Tyson's kind of ass about it. You know, like, kissing the window while he leaves. You know, you see that, even early on, you see the, the seeds that are going to be planted that are going to cause... Tyson's downfall and a lot of it's in large part due to his own failings but at the same time there were other aspects to it it shows that Robin Givens wasn't entirely innocent she really did was in kind of ways kind of a gold digger who wanted to go after him and and get his money and she did and it doesn't excuse him beating her but at the same time I mean it's not, it's not act like she's a saint. Um, and, uh, of course the stuff with Don King who, you know, he's the devil and Tyson made a deal with the devil and lost the show with the Buster Douglas, uh, uh, fight. And I actually like that they showed that because it, it just continues to fall. You see him beat Michael Spinks in a, in a, in what should be the, the biggest moment of his career. Because he proves to people that he can beat a superior fighter that people think is the real heavyweight champion. And he just knocks his ass out. But then he just, after his wife divorced, and he just he just started to fall apart. And he was even starting to fall apart before then. Because he was, you know, his, his other manager, Jimmy, he died. And then he was attacking other people. He, you know, and there was a really, really powerful scene where he shows up late to train for the fight against Spinks, and he gets in the ring, and he's not wanting to fight, and then Bradley Gregg's character, his trainer, I mean, Clark Craig, not Bradley Gregg, <laughs> Clark Craig's character, Kevin Rooney, he ends up wanting to he's trying to get him motivated to to fight to 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 actually do some sparring but he goes too far he pretty he finds out from Tyson's friend that Robin Givens had a miscarriage but of course you kind of it, did she really have a miscarriage or did she not because a lot of people because Clark Gregg thinks that what well, a lot of people do that she never was pregnant and but this pisses off Tyson, and he just loses it. He just goes up, and he's just asking these guys, you know, come on, fight me. Come on, hit me in the face. You got 10 seconds, knock me out. You know, it's just completely, he loses it. And just absolutely just starts beating the shit out of his sparring partners. And this is this is a very shocking uh, sequence, and very it's very intense. And you really do see how unbalanced Tyson is, and he's terrifying. And the film did a great job showing you how terrifying Tyson was in the ring. I mean, just facing off with this man who just, he just wants to kid you, just to look in his eyes. He, he doesn't want to beat you. He doesn't just want to win the fight. He wants to fucking murder you. And that, that's the thing. I mean, that's not, that was Tyson too. He wasn't just going to, he's not, he's, I'm just going to fight you. I'm not going to fight you. I'm going to, I'm going to fucking kill you. I'm going to eat your babies. You know, I'm going to fucking murder you. You know, it, it's just. You can see why, because he's not, he was not, I, I just, his mental health, his mental state was, let's just say, not, 
very good. And like I said, his fire, his anger, the, which might have been a result of his de mental state, is what a lot of what a reason why he was so great. It was also the reason why he flamed out, the reason why he burned out, and the reason why he just couldn't sustain it, couldn't sustain the success. And all these things that he lost in his life, all the people that he trusted and loved that he lost, and just ultimately led to his ultimate downfall because he didn't have anybody anymore that he in his life that he could trust. And he trusted the wrong he chose to trust the wrong people after that in Don King and just let his success go to his head and didn't train very well for the Buster Douglas fight. And Douglas had more he wanted it more and he just took it to Tyson. And that's another thing you don't see very often, except in a film maybe like Rocky Three, where a strong, a hungrier fighter knocks out the champ because he doesn't want to fight anymore. And that's the thing, Tyson, he really, he didn't have that. And even after the fight, he even admits, "I didn't have it. I didn't have it." And it's Don King though who turns him around, and because he's very charismatic, he turns him around, and tells him, "You won that fight." It's like I lost. I didn't have it tonight with Buster. It's like, no, you won, because. You knocked him out, but the referee took forever to count. And that's how he manipulated Tyson. And Tyson, and in the end credits, after Tyson, you know, after they show Tyson getting arrested, you know, getting put to trial, getting sentenced, you see, you know, these little title crawls that say he got out of prison, and he's going to get ready to fight again, and Don King is still his promoter. And then you find out Don King is, like, getting sued for, like, a fraud, and you're like, why is he still your promoter? It was just such a mistake. Such an absolute mistake. And it that's the thing. It's, like I said, it's bittersweet. It's like, you want him to do better in his life. You want him to get help. You want him to make things work out. And to be the guy who comes up from the streets and, and becomes a better person and a better man. But he just self-destructs. And that's not what happens. And it's really enthralling and fascinating to see him self-destruct because that's something you don't see very often in these type of movies so yeah i really like this film i highly recommend it if you like boxing movies if you're a fan of mike tyson or if you like michael j, michael j. white um it's a i thought it was a really good movie for what it was and i think it's definitely an underrated movie it packs quite a punch it's definitely a film i'm going to remember because I thought the boxing scenes, they were low budget, but they had, they had just, they had so much energy and they just pumped me up so much because it just, every punch that Tyson threw felt like it was shot out of a cannon and his story I thought was pretty interesting and Michael J. White's performance is just great and the supporting cast is good as well. George C. Scott and, and uh, Paul Winfield and and uh, Clark Gregg and Tony LoBianco and James Sicking and uh, Reggie Caffey, you know, people like that, and uh, Kristen Wilson and Holt McClaney. So, yeah, I really don't know what to say about the film, except if I was a rate Tyson out of five stars. I'd probably give the movie, I'd say four, four to five. I thought it was a good movie. I, I thought it was a really good film, but I think it was a great movie because, like I said, the direction is it's solid, but it's not spectacular. Cinematography is pretty dull. Uh, the score by Stuart Townsend was Stuart Copeland, not Townsend. Stuart Copeland, not the greatest. There were some moments where it was good, but it just sounded a too, bit too schmaltzy, melodramatic, and corny for my taste at times. It sounded like he just borrowed the score from the page master for the film's heartwarming, heartfelt score, and it just did not fit with the film. Um, but other than that, I like this movie. I thought it, I thought it packed quite a punch. But anyway, thank you for watching my review of Tyson, and I will see you guys later. See ya.